recorded. Okay, we're recording now, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Um, we are only waiting for, I believe, two more people. So we're gonna we're gonna give it a few more minutes just to make sure that everybody gets added into it. I believe we're only waiting for Justina and maybe one more person. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Thank you, kitty. My kitty is warm. Oh, so cute. Mm -hmm. Aw, oh, Sim is here. Should we give it three more minutes? Yeah, we, just... we. I believe we only have one person missing, so I think we can get started. But I'll stay as a host so that I can have them join in. Um, so I think that we're we're pretty much ready. Um, okay. All right. Um, thank you, everybody. 
uh, for coming today. This is the second session and I'm just gonna leave the floor to Musi. Um, but if you, um, Musi, did you just wanna get started or did you wanna uh, see if people had any questions about last session and brush up on that? Um, I, I want to get like straight into it and then I want to have like a, just a Q and A thing at the end since we have like an hour and a half today. Is that okay with everybody? Unless you have something that you have to ask right now. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So, um, so today, um, since you know, last session we mostly focused on the pragmatic. I mean, not the technical aspect. So today we're focusing on the pragmatic, like how to set up your um you know how to set up to photograph your 3d objects so i'm going to show you step by step um and also for today's class i will be just using my phone and everything um from lighting to um all the um, equipment the modifiers they're they're all just household objects that you can easily diy and I'm going to show you, um, go into details about all that. Um, so I'm going to do four demos today. So there will be um, white object against the white background. There will be ceramic, there will be glass, and there will also be an object with um, textures. And after the demo, um, we are going to um, talk a little bit about the list of equipment and tools that we didn't get to discuss um, last session. And also, um, you know, hopefully there will be time for questions. So, um, and also another thing. So today I'll be using this camera right here, Muzi Row. And that would just be, again, the overview of my setup. And then I'll be using this one called Live Demo. That's on my phone. So that would just be, you can see like um, how my phone would see the setup. So um, if you want to, you can pin like either video, just, you know, depends on, you know, which perspective you prefer. So yeah, well, let's get started. Hey, Muzi. So, um, yeah. hey Muzi, just to um, clarify for some people who haven't done it before, if you're in a gallery view and you want to pin the speaker, you can just hover over that screen, over the three, the, it's like a blue square and you have three dots and you get an option for, um, to pin or unpin the video. Thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> I'm a little bit new to Zoom too, so I'm like still figuring out all the technical stuff but hopefully this time it will be better. I have my phone on a tripod, so um, it will be nice and stable. Um, there will be times I will probably take it out and just to show you the details of the setup, but it will most, mostly be on my tripod. So first thing, um, we didn't get to go to the um, phone tent tutorial, I mean, photo tent tutorial last session so i just want to give you a very quick uh walk through on how we do it so i'm gonna use mu zero for this one um so what you need is just a cardboard box as we discussed um in the last session a phone tent a, a photo tent is just this collapsible tent that's made from um, translucent material is really just, it's, it's very easy for you to create an even lit environment to, photo, to photograph objects. That's essentially what it is. So it's very easy just to make your own using a cardboard box. For the, for the sake of the demo, I'm just using a very small one. So you wanna have a, box and if the box most boxes are kind of flat so I'm including the flaps so I have a deeper depth on my box so um, what I did is just 
I marked it so on the sides so I um, so I could like cut it out later. But this is step one, you just um, make a frame and then you cut it all out. So one, one, two, three, four, four sides. Cut it all out and then you find some sort of translucent material. I have one here. It's just a uh, parchment paper. So what you want to do is that you just want to like either tape it or staple it on all four sides. And then you just want to um, tape the other end shut. And then you have a photo tent. So I already made one right here, so I'm going to show you. Are you gonna see? So that's the photo box I'll be using for um, three of um, our demo for today. So now, can I, say, can I can I ask a question really quick? Yes. Um, so the box you showed us, you had cut out two of the sides, but you want yeah. to cut out four? Yes, yes. So the one you have now, the top, the two sides, and the bottom are all cut out and have parchment paper attached? Okay, let me just show you. So for the one, oh, sorry, sorry guys, uh, it's just my face. Let me switch the camera. All right, so for this one, you see the top mm -hmm. is cut off, right? size as well i didn't do the bottom i cut it out right i cut it out i just didn't line it with paper with um parchment paper because for our demo i don't really need it the the point about like if you want to you know um use your box both you know horizontally and vertically you you should do it on four sides but if you if you know that you're just only going to set it in this orientation then it doesn't really matter does that make sense yes thank you okay so so now you've cut your box you've lined your paper the last thing you need to do is to line the interior of your box with um, just white paper. You could use white foam core and you know you could also add more um, corners so the flaps they're more stable, just make the whole thing more durable. You can use white foam core, you can just use white paper to line it or you can just paint it white. It's really, it, it doesn't really matter. And last thing, here, maybe I should turn on the light. I have a piece of white paper, just a large sheet of white paper. I taped it like that. So you have this seamless backdrop for your object. So yeah, that's, um, that's how you make a photo tent. Does, that, does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, all right, so, let's talk. Mosey, this oh. is a, a quick question. I just wanna call it out. This, that large sheet of paper that you have in the back, that's a seamless backdrop. So we couldn't really like kludge together a bunch of paper or just spray paint everything white. It really has to have that nice seamless curve at the bottom so it doesn't show up in the photo. That's the goal. Well, here's the thing. For me, I always prefer, you know, just there is no, I, I don't like that horizon line, you know? You could just make everything nice and white and just place an object, but you know, there's always something in the background. There, there will be if you don't have this paper draping over. So it depends on what, you, what you're photographing, but I really prefer just, nice and smooth and it's 
just there's no distraction it's just all about the object you know okay yeah thank you yeah yeah okay so i'm gonna move this a little bit so you can see what i'm doing but you'll probably um get blown out once i turn on the light but um you will see from um the live demo view of what i'm doing so the first thing is white on white um okay I'm trying to wait how do I make my video big uh, no that's just my face I think you, know you, what? Just, you just turn it um horizontally I think that might work that's what I'm, what's going on it's hard to see what I'm doing um oh you know what I can just look at that you know what it doesn't matter um Okay, so phone on a tripod, we have this plaster cat. So um, I wanna show you why I don't worry is because um, it can get a little bit tricky because they're, they're all the same color. So this is what we have right now. It's okay, but it has a lot of issues first, you know, there's just way too much shadow over here and you don't really see a lot of details. And secondly, it's just kind of funky lighting at the background. So um, what we usually do is that we, we see all the problems and then we just address it one at a time. I think first, wait, did I, did I show you guys the, the light source? Just quickly. So that's a light box. And um, this is just a desk lamp that is raised um, on top of a stool. Can you guys see it? Yeah, so it's really yeah. simple. It's on a, um, de a desktop box and I put like a, a, a stool and some books so I can raise my light so it can go over. Is the light yeah. going through the top, of the, the top of the tent? Yes, yes. Let me just give you a close up view. That's the object, right? Mm -hmm. That's the top of the photo tent and this is a lamp. Mm -hmm. So the light is going through some wax paper. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you for showing us that. Yeah. Okay, all right, let's put it back. Okay, so um, we want to fix the background first. So I have some um, pillowcases. They make great diffusers, by the way. So what I'm doing right now is um, I'm just putting the pillowcase not all over the photo tent. I'm just putting it um, toward the back, toward the back, toward the back of the box, so there's less light. I want to create like a gradient sort of background. When you get it set up, Muzi, can you show us that? Yeah, let me just um, let me just put it up, and then I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so I'm using my live demo. See, it was just um, paper, right? Now I'm sort of folding the uh, pillowcase and just put it toward the back of the box, so there's less light that will hit the, um, the backdrop. So as you can see, now there is more of a gradient effect, right? So I'm just going to fine tune it a little bit. I want it to be a little bit more subtle. So 
So basically you just, you set it up and then you move things around and then you look at the work, take a photo if you need to. What I'm doing right now is also I'm like flaring the light a little bit toward um, where, where I'm at. So toward oh, flaring away from the wall, if that makes any sense. I'm just trying to get that gradient. <laughs> yeah, I think now it looks pretty good. So we fixed the problem. Maybe I should start taking photos. Um, so I'm going to each step, I'm going to take a photo and by the end of the class, well, after today's class, I will email you guys a list of all the photos so you can you know, compare each step. So, um, so when I go to my camera and take the photo, the, the demo, live demo will just go black. So just an FYI. I tried to do screen share so you can see exactly what's going on with my camera, but it was just, there were a lot of lagging going on. So I think this, this is a better way to do it. Okay, just gonna take a photo. All right. Okay. Okay, so I just took a photo. As as I, I said before, like way too much shadow over here. I want to um, brighten it up a little bit. So the easiest thing you can do is to um, use a white foam core to reflect some light. So this is what I'm gonna do. So if you just look at the um, live demo and see the difference it makes. So what I'm doing is I'm propping a white foam core next to the sculpture. Without, this is without, and this is with. I'm also going to move the foam core around it so you can see the different effects. It will be very subtle, but you can still see it. Can everybody see it okay? I don't know if the video is lagging. No, it's, it seems good on my end. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to play around a little bit until I'm happy with the amount of reflection. I think here is pretty good. So I'm going to take another shot. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I think it's pretty good now, but I still want to have a little bit more light here. And there's one more thing you can do. So um, I think we've talked about this. You can just use a little mirror to direct the light. So if you pay attention to the cat, let me just, can you see it? So you, it's, it will be yeah. more intense if you move it like super close. If you want it to be more subtle, you just slowly, you know, Move it a little bit further. If that's too much light, you can use um, aluminum foil. But I like, I kind of like the way it looks. So I'm going to um, take another photo with a mirror and then come back. Okay, so um, I think it's pretty good. Um, 
but there's one more thing. I'm just a little bit, I'm, I'm very picky when it comes to shadows. I just feel like the shadow, it could be just a little bit more soft. So this is what I'm doing. Get another piece of diffusing material. I'm using parchment paper here. And I'm just going to put it on top of the box. You can see straight away that the shadow is a lot more soft. And um, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's good. Where'd you put the foil? Is that what you said, Muzi? That you put the foil somewhere? It's a it's a piece of parchment paper. Let me just Oh, move. just the parchment paper. Okay. Do you okay. want to see where so I put it right here? Okay. Where the light is going through. So I just want to diffuse a shadow a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Let me just take a photo and then I'll come back. Okay. All right. All right. So that's pretty much it. Like for you know things that are just white. If you know the techniques, it's actually very easy to do. Do I have any questions so far? Okay. Um, oh, by the way, you know, like things like this, vertical shape, sort of heavy, is also great to use um, to prop up your um, reflectors and modifiers and such. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, with your phone, do you uh, do you do the white balance? Uh, stuff that we talked about last class. No, I for for my phone, I just I didn't use any third party apps. I just opened my camera app and just um, use my uh, my camera. I I am hoping to go through some editing apps and you know show you how to adjust white balance and everything. But because I'm using a daylight balance both and I'm a turn, I'm, I closed all my curtains and I turned off other light sources. So I know that my light source is pretty reliable. And on, on the phone screen, it looks pretty neutral. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, so. Here's our next. Let's move things away. All right. So, this is a little pen holder thingy. Um, I use this because it has like some textures here and it has some smooth texture back there. So, I thought it would be a good example to show you okay so i kind of like the um the the gradient backdrop so i'm going to leave the pillowcase where it is um might just uh, let me just adjust my tripod a little bit you see it's kind of looking downward and it's creating a lot of distortion, so I'm just going to correct that. Okay. Okay. All right, so. Remember, we, we put a piece of parchment paper. Like you can see the difference. Like just look at the shadow right here. This is without, and um, this is with. And I prefer it. Um, I prefer it with. So we're going to leave it there. It 
it looks pretty good already. Um, I'm going to take a photo and then we'll see what we can do to improve it. Oh. Okay, let's go back. Oh, what am I doing? So my problem with this is that um Okay, you can see oh, you can see all the textures here, but it looks a little bit flat at the back. So um, what I'm thinking is I want to add another light source that's going this way. So I have another light set up. We can just test out to see if it works. And that is a pretty harsh light source. And um, it's really, um, it's overpowering the one that's above. So I don't think that's a good idea. So, um, but I, I feel like a, a white foam core, like what we did last time, is just not gonna bring enough light. So what I'm gonna do is using a larger piece of mirror, and just trying to direct some light onto this area. So maybe that's a little bit too big of a mirror, but we'll see. Can you guys see the difference? This is with mirror and this is without. Yeah, definitely. It just it just brings that a little bit of light very subtle but definitely noticeable so i'm gonna take another photo and come back i i, I like to use mirrors a lot because it's just it's very versatile and it doesn't really overpower your um your overall lighting setup Okay. So I I think that's pretty good. Um, we can move on to the next one. What does everybody else think? Do you think I need to add more modifiers or? Right now we're not seeing the sculpture in the oh. screen. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Back, of course. There you are. Yeah, let me hold up the mirror. Because it's, it's like everybody wants their photo to look a certain way. So I'm just, I'm interested to know, like, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks like that. It makes a big difference. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you can always just add little things and just to make very subtle changes one step at a time, you know. Let's just move on. We have two more to go. Um, okay. So, the next object. Just uh. can you hear me now? Um, yeah, I think I. Um, Musi, I think I accidentally clicked the unmute on the live demo. Okay, okay. But I can hear you. Yeah, I can. Okay, hear. cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is a ceramic vase. It has a little bit of um, it has some tactile quality to it, and it's sort of shiny. So. Um, 
Okay, so in one second. Okay, that's better. Because it's a, um, it's almost like a cylinder shaped object. And since we have only one light source that's coming from above, most of like this area, they're all in shadows. So um, we definitely need more light coming from, from the side. So I, I had a light already set up to the left. I'm just going to show you quickly um, how I set it up. So instead of a light stand, wait, can you guys see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, it's just a step ladder with a, um, uh, what do you call that, a trash can with a dumbbell in it, so it stabilizes it, and a clip light on top. Yeah, so it's super simple setup. That looks like a heavy dumbbell. <laughs> it's 15 <laughs> pounds. Oh, okay. Susie, we're all testing your workout routine yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so let's turn on the light. It, it, it's just the same, same, same intensity, same, same level. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's not great, so I'm just gonna move the light around a little bit. Um, I like the fact that there's more light on this side, but um, there's not enough on this side. We'll probably use a mirror later on to reflect some light, but um, I feel like the light coming this way is overpowering the light that's going down because you see that harsh shadow over there and you can't really see anything that's cast by that light. I'm just gonna turn it off, see the difference. So what I'm gonna do right now, cause I, I want to keep the, um, the light from above as the main light and this is just as a fill light, the one, the one that's coming um, this way. So I'm just gonna use another pillowcase to diffuse the light. Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. That made a big difference. Yeah. So that looks better. Um, yeah, that looks, um, I think I can add just a little bit more to the A lot more black paper. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm just gonna take a shot for now and then uh, come back. Okay, so I think like this area had it had improved a lot, but oh. okay, I think it's good. All right. Um, but I want to bring a little bit more light here and also here. So um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this and see if it makes any difference. Oh. Mm. 
yeah, it's not really doing anything. Um, I might just use that little mirror again. So, I can bring more light here, but I also want a little bit more light down there, so I might have to use a different, different mirror. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay. Um, Can you see the difference? Like just a little bit a little bit of light. Yeah, so um I'm going to take a shot and come back. I'm do I'm using timer this time because you know both of my hands are holding things. So um trying to get it. Oh I hope I got it. <laughs> okay. Um So I want to also want to try this thing and see if any difference this makes. Oh yeah, actually this is not bad. That's the foam core, right? Yeah, 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 foam core, yeah. What about the big mirror? The big mirror, okay. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. Let me show you. Um, See, the thing with this is that, I'll just show you. You see, it's casting a shadow. Yeah, I see. See, the whole thing is illuminated really nicely, but I really don't like that shadow behind it, even like from this angle too. This is why sometimes I like to use a very small mirror that gives you like a very precise reflection. Yeah, sometimes if you like, you want like something like a long sort of highlight, you could, you know, tape all your mirror, just leave like a slit of it and you just experiment and play around. Um, yeah, so we'll take another shot with the foam core and, um, and then I think we're good. Yeah, I kind of like this better than the mirror. Actually, maybe the foam core and then like a little mirror. Just add a little bit of highlight. That might be good. Okay. Trying to stabilize it. Okay, good. Oh, All right. Okay. So now we're. Um, do I have any questions so far? Okay. So I think this one is good. So we're moving on to um, glass. So with glass, hey, Muzi, can you turn on your your? Sorry to interrupt you. Could you turn no, on your, um, no. your uh, camera again? I'm sorry. We've got your screensaver uh, for your camera. Oh yeah, sorry, your sorry. Your demo. Your demo is still taking photos. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Now we're back. So. Um, Next, we're going to talk about how to photograph glass, but glass it won't really work well in this kind of setup. I can, I can just show you right now. Um, so, so we have an object here, 
that's transparent, that has some sort of details, right? And it's super glossy. It's like the worst thing to photograph. And it's just not the most flattering lighting. I'm going to take a photo of it so we can do like a side by side comparison in the end. Okay. All right. So, so um, we're we're going to. I have a I have a different setup over there. So let me just move things over there and show you. So with this one, I might just have to um, hold it with my hand because my tripod can't really go that low. Um, so for now, I'm, I'm turning this camera off. Uh, I'll turn it back on once I'm all set up. Um, Okay, so now I, I have my uh, ceiling light on, so I, I can show you the setup. Um, so I, I put this object on top of just a box and stack of books. And on the top, it's a white foam core. And this is a piece of frosted mylar. I know not everybody have this kind of material, but I've literally tried everything, like wax paper, parchment paper, everything is just, they're either too, um, too translucent or they're not smooth enough. And I tried fabric and they have this like weird crease. So, so far, <laughs> this is the only thing that worked. And I got this at, um, I think it's called University Art Supplies in Midtown. And I believe you can also get it on like Blick or Amazon. So yeah, so it's a piece of mylar that just drapes over and then I just like clamped it down. So let's move over this way. So behind it, this is that um, diffuser that we used last night for photographing um, the painting and the um, framed photograph. I did it so it just adds more um, diffusion, making the light more even. And this everything is uh, clamped on a bamboo pole and it's just two bar stools. Just, I just, yeah, just like that to stabilize everything. For the light source, two clip lights. And then they're just attached to another stool. And I used a couple of um, cardboard and I um, wrapped them around with aluminum foil. So the light sort of reflects and bounces evenly. Essentially, I was trying to create, recreate the um, interior of my light box. Um, yeah, so we move. Over here, I have another light, which I will explain this setup. But for now, we're gonna um, remove remove that. I'm just gonna take it off and come back. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm turning oh, I'm turning on the lights, but I'm turning off my ceiling light so it's um you don't get that weird color thing going on. Um okay. So I don't know if you can see it, but you see that weird vertical banding, right? And this is what happens, um, especially like we're facing the camera directly into our light source. And this happens when um, you plug any sort of lights into um, household alternate current. So it's essentially the, the alternate current makes light flickering. So, um, and we can't really see it, but with cameras, um, with a shutter speed that is faster than one sixty of a second, it will show. So what do you do if you have that? Essentially, um, I have a piece of, um, this is called neutral density gel. It's essentially, it's kind of like a sunglass material, but it's just a neutral gray and it stops um, excess amount of light from coming into your lens. So I just wanna show you, see the difference? You can see? Lucy, and you can buy that at like a photo store or did you order it online? Um, you can get that on like any camera store on B and H uh autorama i believe amazon has it too and also i have another alternative for you if you have a pair of sunglasses that's not like crazy colored sunglasses that's pretty neutral look i have a pair of sunglasses look you see it does the trick too but like see that is a little bit brown so you might have to adjust your um, color in post. But for the demo, we're just gonna use the, um, the neutral density gel. I'll put this in the, um, the class notes. So, so this is a pretty, pretty, um, pretty good. Like, I mean, it's a lot better than the previous image, so we're gonna take a photo and come back. Okay. So, my problem with this setup is that I, I like everything that's going on here, but I feel like um, the, the, this area can have a little bit more light. And this is why I set up another light up here. It's just clamped on a, on a chair. So let's go back to it and you can see it's got more light, right? But it also has that shadow. I mean, some of you, some of you might like it. It depends on, again, depends on what you're photographing and what sort of image you prefer, but I wanted to get rid of it. So I, um, I added just another, um, Another diffusion screen, so I just like taped it over the light source. I could, I maybe I could use something a little bit, but no, I feel like this thick fabric it's sort of a little bit too dense, but you know, it's just what, what I have really like something that big that can cover. I'm going to take another photo. It would just be, bye Justina. It would just be, um, you know, 
it would just be very subtle. I would just take a photo and then come back. Okay. Um, See, this so photo now, is, which one is this? What's the lighting on this one again? If you could just recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So I added a light that's coming from above and then I added a diffusion screen. So that was a photo. Okay, thank you. Pretty much the same thing, but just with a little bit um, more light on this surface, excuse me. So um, that's all the demo for today. Hang on, let me just. Um, um, you know what? I'm just going to um, turn off this camera for now. Uh, Okay. So, um, what's that? Oh, yeah. So, um, I want to go to our, um, oh, hey, Aida. Aida, you're still there? Yeah, hey. I'm here. It's just me. Um, would you be able to make me the host? Yeah, I want to share, like, yeah. Yeah, give me one second. There you go. Okay, thank you. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. So we didn't have time to go through um, this list. So I want to um, just continue that. So um, where we were at, light stands or C stand. I mean, um, as I've shown you, it's clearly possible, you know, you can get chairs and bar stools, but it's having a light stand it just it makes things easier and you can also use that as something that can you know hold your modifiers and just it's, it's a versatile tool you know if if your budget allows it's um it's it's very useful um so if you use a camera i really think a tripod is kind of a thing that you must have um, with a phone, it's just, it, it, you don't really need to um, worry about sh slow shutter speed because the phone can figure everything out, but when it comes to a camera, it's always a good idea to have a tripod. Um, or something like a friction arm. This is uh, just a little bit more lightweight, so it's like this thingy that you can um, just move around in different angles. On um, this end, you can either attach a camera or a phone. Um, so on the other end, I'll share some other adjustment. So you can, it's, it, in terms of movement, it's really flexible. Um, if you wanna like film something really quick on your phone or on your camera, you can just like, it comes with a clamp or you can get um, different kinds of um, attachment to it. You can just like attach it to your chair or your desk. It's also a very versatile tool. It works. I mean, I have a DSLR and I could put that on here. So unless you have like, a really heavy duty camera, it works for cameras too. So yeah. Um, a remote shutter release. Again, if you use a camera, I recommend a remote shutter release for two reasons. Um, first, because 
when you're photographing something in the studio, you need a lot of light equipment. Sometimes you have to hold something. Having a remote shutter release really just it gives you an extra pair of hands. You don't have to like always go to your camera and just press the button. That's thing one. Thing two is um, with DSLRs, there's always a little bit of camera shake. Essentially, when you release the shutter, there's a mirror inside the camera. It flips up, and then the shutter releases, and then it flips down. Sometimes, even even the set of camera on a tripod, that can still cause a little bit of shake, and you get a blurry image. So, um, yeah, having a shutter release is really just eliminate the chance that you know pressing the camera and causing any sort of movement. And another thing that you can do is with a lot of DSLR cameras, it has this mirror lockup function, which means you just you press a button twice. The first time you press it, the mirror goes up, and then you do it again, and then the shutter releases. That's like a foolproof way to you know eliminate any camera shake. Um, yeah, so if you don't have a shutter release, I definitely recommend using the mirror lockup. I think it's usually uh, it's called MUP. It depends on the brand, but you know, <clears throat> a lot of camera has that um, function. Uh, backdrop, they're available in a big roll. They're quite expensive, but you don't really need that. You can just like get a large sheet of paper. Diffusion screen, um, yeah, they come in different sizes and density, but you know, there's so many replacement, um, different kinds of baking paper, fabric. They just, they have, they do have different um, level of translucency. So, you know, you just gotta experiment and figure out what, what, what works the best for you. Um, reflectors, with, um, I've shown you quite a few. Um, so the link, that I um, included is like so, like something like this. It's collapsible, so you take it out. It's, it's actually quite large. So it has a gold reflector, a silver reflector, black black one, a white one, and in the middle it's a big diffusion screen. So it's kind of a versatile tool, but at the same time you really don't need to buy anything. There's, you know, there's just so many substitutes. Um, oh, and fingers and dots. Yeah, I was going to use some. I forgot. Anyway, so these are just for very nuanced controls. So I, I made these. these. This is a sanding screen. And I just like duct taped it. So what it does is um, it's usually made from black translucent material and it's designed to reduce light like very specific nuanced amount of light so sometimes you just want to like hold it over your light source you know it's um it comes in different shapes too just a little little tool for very subtle changes um do you guys want to see like how it affects the light Maybe I can just, um, let's okay. All right, I'm on um, live demo again. Huh? Can everybody see me? Yeah. You can see my, oh, I can't see anything. What? Oh, oh, here we go. Okay, yeah. so um, here's just a light, right? So I'm gonna use this one. Just look at the, what I'm doing is just moving it across. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? 
And also you could um, move it closer to your subject. You see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Usually you don't need it until like the very last step. You just want to add or like you just want to reduce tiny bit of, of light like at certain areas. This is the, um, this is called a dot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically um, what they do. Um, okay. All right. Um, yeah, and lastly, a gray card is just it gives you a meaningful target to do your white balance with. Um, it was used traditionally um, for film photography, but now with like all the digital light meters and everything, it's you don't really need that anymore. Um, but yeah, it's very useful when it comes to um, reading white balance. If you don't have that, you can always just read it off like a black, gray, neutral area. Um, yeah, so um, I've purchased a lot of used equipment from KEH.com and also eBay. So um, those are some good resources. So I've gathered more items that you may or may not need, but those things that I found to be useful. So um, different kinds of clamps. See, I feel like the only thing that probably one of the verse, most versatile to like light stands and a bunch of clamps. They just they can do so many things. And also um, you get clamps that has an attachment to boom arms to light stands usually this attachment are universal so you get one they can go on all kinds of things um duct tape gaffers tape you know if you have cores around you want to for safety um artist tape for you know attaching your backdrop into your photo tent or on the wall um um, and um, just for, um, just a comment about the duct tape versus the gaffer tape. I don't know if people are familiar with it, but um, gaffer tape is just like a fabric tape, and when you peel yeah. it, it doesn't leave a residue. So it's a lot friendlier than duct tape to just kind of like use and take off. Um, duct tape obviously leaves that like gooey, black, gross stuff, and gaffer tape doesn't, but it's a little more pricey. Yeah, a, yeah. A lot thanks more. for that addition. Yeah, it's actually pretty expensive so yeah i use a lot more duct tape than gaffer tape <laughs> yeah um what else but gaffer tape is like really good for you know when you like fix things like there's some light leaks and you know it's just a lot more durable anyways um yeah as i mentioned like heavy vertical objects when you want to prop something up, like a mirror or something, um, you can get like a, a pipe fitting from hardware store. You can just like, you know, put it there and those things are good. Um, cleaning cloth, glass cleaner, you know. Sometimes it's it seems like unnecessary, but when you go to edit your photos, see like all these dots and things, you could have you know, easily just gotten rid of. Um, canned air, I use them a lot. Cotton gloves. Um, yeah. Uh, so there are um, some phone apps that I, I've tried some and some, some are actually really good. So I want to show you on my phone, but I don't know about the lagging issue. Maybe I'll just like do one and see how that goes. Uh, yeah, sounds good, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm just, I think I have to wait. 
You're still sharing your screen, Mace. Um, do you want me to? Thank you. Do you want me to switch the host or anything? Um, I think I can just make live demo. Let me see. Can I just make the other live one? demo the host? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. Let's do that. Cool, cool. All right. Um, so, so I'm going to have to share. Share content. Mm. Oh, I can see myself. Cool. Um, okay, so here are some of the photography apps. So, um, I, I recommend snapseed and lightroom mobile they're both free and I, I think they're they're both for both android and iphone anyways i've all written them down so you can check the um check the um the class notes so here's a photo and it actually has a lot of nuanced tools um so this is just a very um uh general sort of adjustment so you know you can do the brightness and it has a, a histogram down the bottom um you know contrast all kinds of options this is just for like a very quick edit um it also has this very cool feature like photoshop has and do curves curves is really just it gives you more nuanced control over your image. And it comes with a bunch of presets as well. It's pretty cool. And you can also like do the curves on different colors. Um, oh yeah, white balance. Okay, so you can do auto white balance down the bottom. Hey, wait, you can't see the bottom? Oh. Um, and it's not showing on the screen but like on the bottom it just it, it gives you different options so with this one it has like auto white balance i'm pressing it and it's doing auto white balance and uh, next to that it's um temperature and tint so as i explained a light temperature i mean light temperature color temperature is the spectrum from blue to yellow right so Wait, you see? Yeah. So um, there's also another um, spectrum that it comes to light. It's um, it's called tint in a lot of photo editing programs. It's the um, it's the green to magenta spectrum. It's it's almost it's kind of like on a different axis than um, yellow to blue, and is caused by mostly artificial lightings and. Um, yeah, like programs like Photoshop, Lightroom, they, they have, they all have um, two different um, sets of options for you to, oh, 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 um, for you to adjust. Usually it's, it's um, mo usually it's just yellow and blue with tint, it's more of a very nuanced control. Yeah, anyways. Um, so that's a cool feature. Um, all the other things, crop, those things are just everywhere. Um, it has like a tool for you to, wait, not this one. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's the brush. So it gives you um, local adjustment options. So you can like paint a little area, right? And then you can like, um, I'm just like not really doing anything, but I'm just showing you like, um, does like exposures, um, if you wanna go down, oh, you can erase everything. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Also has like a, a local white balance adjustment 
yeah um what else yeah i think those are the ones that i found really useful I and mean, it also just came with like a bunch of presets that you can play with um yeah and Light lightroom mobile it has pretty much all the same features um it's free um, but you have to pay to if you have Lightroom desktop version and if you want to synchronize everything, you do have to pay for that. But um, the only thing that Snapseed doesn't have is that um, Lightroom allows you to shoot raw. So essentially, you have like uh, more f flexibility when it comes to um, editing. Okay, so now we have um, about ten minutes left. Um, I think. We we'll just uh, we we'll go to questions. If um anybody have any questions, yeah, Musi, you said that Lightroom is free. Um, is that just if you have the Adobe Creative Cloud already, or oh no, Lightroom Lightroom Mobile is free. Like you oh, can I download see. it on your phone, mm -hmm. which is pretty great. I mean, it's a great program, uh, but you have to buy Lightroom. Um, if you, you know, you, if you want to install that on your, um, on your computer. And I think, I don't know Adobe still does it, but they do like a Lightroom and Photoshop bundle for like $9.99 a month, something like that. Yeah. That's the thing I'm on right now. So yeah, it is like a subscription based thing. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. The mobile version is not, it is free, but the desktop version is not. Lucy, when do you think it's best to um, use raw images versus not? What, sorry, what was the question? Sorry, when do you think it's best to use raw images versus not? Okay, so um, I, I, I use my camera a lot. So whenever I use my camera, it's always raw. I never shoot JPEG on my camera. When it comes to my phone, I just, it's, it, it's like JPEG is the default for, format when it comes to a phone. So, so essentially the difference between raw and JPEG is just think of JPEGs as um, like a baked cake, right? And raw, is the raw ingredient that you use to bake the cake. So what I mean is essentially JPEG is this compressed file. So when you take a picture, the camera just makes a decision. It gets rid of a bunch of data and just give you a JPEG. So um, it's very small. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's great for sharing on like, um, sending emails, viewing them on screen. That's what it's essentially designed for. Whereas raw, it has all the data. So when you go to process the file, it gives you just so much flexibility. I've done like an experiment, like I underexpose an image four stops under. So it's like almost black. I shot it in both RAW and JPEG, and I try to, you know, adjust the exposure in in Lightroom. And the RAW, it just it, it looked completely fine. It just like did all the adjustments, but the JPEG, it just went completely blown out. Mm -hmm. And that just shows you like RAW has stored so much more data that just gives you more flexibility, um, you know, to do. Um, things like color corrections and um, nuanced, um, you know, exposure controls. Whereas, yeah. So I, if I want to print something big or I want to, I want to have high quality images, I always do raw. Whereas JPEG okay. is just, um, yeah. But JPEG is just, it's really convenient because it's such a small file, yeah. Yeah. Did um do you know if I feel like some phones have the capability, I feel like some phones have the capability to shoot or to handle a raw image and or shoot with it, but I'm wondering if you could edit a raw image on your phone in Lightroom. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like if you imported it from your computer, let's say. 
Wait, what was your question again? So let's pretend that my phone can does not shoot in raw, which uh -huh. it might or might not. I can't remember now. But um, I, let's say I downloaded from my Google Drive onto my phone a raw image. Would Lightroom edit it? Lightroom Mobile edit it? Oh, I'm not quite sure. You could okay. try it. Yeah, because I know. I know Lightroom Mobile, it does something to make your phone camera to take raw image. So, I mean, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I'm you, curious. You yeah. should try I'll, it I'll out. Look. I'll let you know what I find out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, seems like it, it seems like it would since, it, it, you know, it will capture a raw image and then you can edit that. That It would, also it would be make like, sense. If to, you just put it in. Yeah. Yeah. You airdrop it. I've never you tried have... to airdrop an a raw image onto my phone, though. I wonder. I've never done that mm -hmm. either. My phone's kind of old. <laughs> also, you might want to have like decent storage to process the file. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah, because it's pretty big. But yeah, okay. that's um, that's really interesting. Musi, you're yeah. still um, sharing your screen from your phone. I don't yeah, know you're, sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> I was just letting you know in case that you were. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go to application. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, I just found something that said it can. It made an oh. update to Lightroom Mobile. Interesting. Um, right. That's yeah. such a cool app. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I found some other cool ones. Um, it's in the it's in the um, Google Doc. There's this app you can just you can take a picture, and then later on you can shift the focus. Like I can make my face in focus, or I can make the background in focus. It's kind of like a cool little thing to play with. Yeah. Did I talk about everything? I think I did. Any more questions? No. Oh, um, so um, after today, I'm going to um, just go through everything we've talked about and update the file, the Google Doc. And then I'll put like all the demo photos, maybe in like a slideshow or something, and then I'll just export that into a PDF. So you have like a, like a text file and then you have like an image file, so. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Musi. Yeah. Yeah, okay. thanks, Musi, that'd be awesome too. Yeah, thanks for everything. It's been totally a good, helpful way to sort of rethink about it all. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I'm learning a lot from like doing this online also. You know, like, yeah, I've got some feedbacks on like, you know, camera setup and things. It's, yeah, I've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, I hope you teach the class again, um, just for, yeah. you know, people that didn't catch it. So, yeah, uh, I really want to. Yeah. 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 Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, I'll be emailing a feedback form so that you can give us some feedback just to generally. That's a standard thing that we do um, all the time. And then also, don't forget to check out the other two online classes that we have. One of them is being taught by Kay Farrell on Instagram for creatives. So if you want to hone your use of social media to promote your work, that would be a great class for it. And we also have other, another class that is also oriented toward creatives, um, specifically artists. And it's about artist residencies. Um, and it talks about, you know, are they right, which ones are right for you, funding, you know, whether, um, you know, and how to plan your material so that you can have a better chance of getting in. So um, check this out on our website. And thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, guys. Bye. You. Bye. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Bye, Ada.